Yeah, it's it's definitely upsetting. I don't think there's nobody in our league should be facing any sort of racism, hurtful, disrespectful, hateful comments and threats. Um, you know, those aren't fans. Those are trolls. And it's a real disservice to. OK, so it's like the WNBA has it out for Caitlin Clark and it's getting a bit crazy. First, they tried to downplay her on the top 25 list. Then they kept trying to ignore her in the rookie of the year race for months. And now they're trying to do the same with the MVP race. It's ridiculous. Caitlin has absolutely earned her spot in that conversation. And I'm not the only one saying this. People are noticing. And there are very, very few people, but there are some out there who resent the fact that this young white girl came out there and did her thing. Man, this level of disrespect is just on another level. It's worse than anything Caitlyn's dealt with before. Remember when ESPN kept ranking her way lower than she deserved? Putting her as low as six among rookies? Even in their latest update, she still wasn't number one. We know what they're doing though. ESPN's all about creating buzz. They have to stir the pot, get people talking. So yeah, they pull stunts like this. But when the WNBA itself does it, that's a whole different story. They drop their MVP list and guess what? Caitlyn's not even close to the top. She's easily a top five player in the league right now and has one of the strongest MVP cases right behind Aja Wilson. Yet, they stuck her all the way down in the honorable mentions. If this is what they're doing, I'm telling you, it's a straight up robbery. Caitlyn Clark is about to get snubbed from first team all WNBA. And that's just wrong. She's had an incredible season, better than most of the players on that list. Let's break it down one by one, and I'll show you why she deserves to be ranked higher. Starting with number five, Alyssa Thomas. Um, it's, it's playoff time. Um, you know, we, we kind of went through a, a, a little drought, and, um, you know, this is what I live for. Playoffs is, is what I'm waiting for all, all season long, and, um, you know, that's, that's my game. Um, I can hit you scoring, rebounding, assisting, and... Um, in that moment, my, my team needed me to score, and, and that's what I went out there and did. All right, let's get straight to it. We can count her out already. Why? Because she couldn't live up to all the hype. Remember last season? Alyssa Thomas set a WNBA record for assists. Huge deal, right? But then, during March Madness, when Caitlyn was having one of the best postseason runs ever, Caitlyn's teammate tweeted that she could lead the WNBA in assists next year. Alyssa, feeling a little too confident, responded with a laugh and said, Don't mess with me. And guess who else thought it was hilarious? Cheryl Swoops, who replied with laughing emojis. Fast forward to this season. Alyssa Thomas breaks the assist record again, even averaging more assists than last year. But here's the twist. The player she was mocking? She broke the WNBA single season assist record herself and actually averaged more assists per game than Alyssa has ever managed in her entire career. But it doesn't stop at assists. Caitlin's out here scoring too. While Thomas is putting up around 10 or 11 points a game, Caitlin's nearly doubling that at around 20 points per game. Sure, they call Thomas the triple-double machine, like she's dominating everything on the court. But if you check the numbers, she's only a few rough games away from barely scraping a triple single this season. It's a bit like the Angel Reese double-double situation. Alyssa Thomas might be known as the triple-double queen, but this season, she's only got one more triple-double than Caitlyn. Triple-double for a rookie, Caitlyn Clark has it! More history for the FIBA rookie! The records keep coming! When Russell Westbrook won MVP in the NBA for averaging a triple-double, he was also the league's leading scorer putting up over 30 points per game. Alyssa Thomas, on the other hand, isn't even averaging a triple-double. She's 37th in the entire WNBA in points per game, and on her own team, she's only fifth in scoring. Meanwhile, there are only a handful of players in the league scoring more points than Caitlin Clark, and with the Sun, everyone's chipping in with double-digit points. It's no surprise Thomas racks up so many assists. Everyone on the court can score. Yet, she still averages fewer assists than rookie Caitlin Clark. Now, imagine how many assists Clark would have if her whole team was scoring 10 or more points per game. Sure, the Sun have a better record, but are we really saying Alyssa Thomas is more valuable to her team than Caitlin Clark is to the Fever? If not, 
how can Thomas be ahead of Clark in the MVP race? Next on the list, coming in at number four, is Brianna Stewart. So there's been this hot take debate about, you know, do you need to have a championship for legacy when yeah. you talk about a women's college basketball player? You are the expert on this since you have four. Yeah. Um, does Caitlin Clark need a championship to be considered one of the greats in women's college basketball history? Yeah, she does. <laughs> I think so. Because then it's gonna, you're gonna look ten years back and you're gonna you're gonna see all these you're gonna see all the the records she's broken and the the points and stuff like that. But anybody knows, you know, your goal when you play college basketball is to win a national championship. So you need one. If we were talking about the best players in the world overall, she might rank higher, maybe even second, depending on how much weight you put on past performance and reputation. But right now, this season. Brianna Stewart, who was MVP last year, shouldn't even be in the conversation. Her stats are down, fewer points, fewer rebounds, fewer assists, and her shooting is off. She's hitting a career-worst 29% from three this season. Plus, she's struggling from the free throw line and the field in general. If you just look at the box score, Stewart might seem slightly better because she scores a bit more. But they play different positions, so their roles aren't the same. They both average about 8 or 9 rebounds and assists a game, but assists are tougher to get, so Caitlin's are more impressive. Plus, Caitlin grabs more rebounds than Stewart gets assists, and when it comes to shooting, Caitlin's more efficient across the board, whether it's from 3, the free throw line, or 2 pointers, even though she's a guard. Nelson Adota trying to save it and does, and now Clark comes up with a steal. Clark? Thought about pulling up from three, will dip inside and lay it in. Caitlin Clark does not need much space here. With 16 points, she's played terrific defense as well. Here's Clark off a screen, gets a look, and hits. Let's be real, Brianna Stewart is having a good season, but it's not her best. She's kind of coasting on the fact that her team, the New York Liberty, is absolutely crushing it this year. Remember when she was MVP last season? Well, now her team's the top dog, and she's not even in the running for the title again. That tells me she's not playing at the same level she was. And to make things even more interesting, there's another player on her own team who is ranked higher on this list. How can we take her seriously as an MVP candidate, when she's not even the MVP of her own squad? Then, the WNBA placed Sabrina Ionescu at number three on this list. Sabrina Ionescu gets a lot of praise for leading the Liberty to be one of the best teams, and that's great. But when you look into the numbers and compare her to Caitlin Clark, it tells a different story. Statistically, Clark is outperforming Sabrina in nearly every category. Points, assists, rebounds, steals. You name it. Clark's got the upper hand. She's even slightly more accurate from beyond the arc and at the free throw line. So while Sabrina might be the face of the team, Clark's making a huge impact too. Now, it's true the Liberty are a stronger team than the Fever, and that definitely boosts Sabrina's case for MVP. But let's look at her supporting cast. She's playing alongside the reigning MVP, who's still one of the top five players in the league, and Jonquel Jones, another former MVP considered among the league's best when you've got three top 10 players on your team, who's really the MVP. In 2021, it was Jones. A last year, it was Brianna Stewart. And now, it's Sabrina. The Liberty seem to switch their best player every season. And that's not even mentioning their other standouts. Laney Hamilton is a defensive superstar, and Courtney Vandersloot is a legend when it comes to assists. She's led the league in assists seven times, which is just wild. She takes a lot of pressure off Sabrina, so Sabrina doesn't have to carry the team on her own. On the flip side, Caitlin Clark doesn't have the luxury of playing with two MVPs and one of the best passers ever. She has to do it all. Score, create for her teammates, everything. And she's thriving. Imagine how many more assists or points she'd rack up with that kind of support. So how is she sitting third in MVP voting, when some might say Sabrina's not even the best player on her team? It just doesn't add up. The WNBA's official rankings even referenced a specific moment from a single game, as a reason for Sabrina's high placement. And honestly, that's weak. MVP isn't about one highlight play from months ago. 
It's about consistency over the entire season. There's a lot of inconsistency with the rankings. If team success is such a big factor, and Sabrina ranks higher than Clark, despite Clark having better stats, why is Aja Wilson ranked higher than Nafisa Collier, who has better numbers, but plays for a team with a worse record? And Caitlin Clark isn't the only one getting overlooked. Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx deserves some love. Vandersloot gives it up, good timing for John Cole Jones and the rejection from Collier. A lot of energy and a little bit of swagger to this Lynx squad. Bantam, six seconds to go. The go ahead pass, finds its way through to Carrington, the block! Wow, Collier got all of that! Her team has the best record in their conference and the second best overall in the WNBA. Now, we know the MVP usually goes to a player on the top-seeded team, but the Lynx aren't number one. Still, Aja Wilson is going to win MVP unanimously. But here's where it gets interesting. When Collier and Wilson faced off, Collier absolutely dominated. We're talking one of the greatest performances in WNBA history. 25 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists, and shooting over 70% from the field. Oh, and she beat Wilson's team in the process. Some say the MVP debate isn't even worth having, but I think Collier has a really strong case. She's averaging 20 points and nearly 10 rebounds per game. That's a double-double. And on top of that, she's arguably the best defender in the league. Unlike some of the other top teams, the Lynx aren't a super team. Last year, they weren't even considered a good team. But Collier's leadership has brought them to the top of the league. Since the All-Star break, the Lynx have been the best team in the WNBA. But because everyone's already decided who the MVP will be, it seems like no one is talking about how incredible Collier has been. Now, comparing Collier to Caitlin Clark is tricky because they play different positions, but they've both been game changers for their teams. Stat-wise, it's a close call. Collier's got the edge in scoring, but Clark's assist numbers are record-breaking, which is huge. Plus, Clark is grabbing more rebounds than Collier is getting assists, and that's got to count for something. On defense, Collier is a monster, but Clark is more efficient. She shoots better percentages from the field, from three, and at the free throw line. Both of them have strong MVP cases. They both deserve to be in that conversation, and honestly, I wouldn't fault anyone for picking either one. But here's the thing, people act like there's no debate. Everyone's already saying Aja Wilson is going to win MVP. It's like the decision's been made already, and no one else is even considered. And honestly, they might be right. Wilson is having a historic season. Her stats are off the charts, and it could very well be her year. And I think it's relying on her passing. Getting the ball to her, defense double team, Aja Wilson with the three. <laughs> That's where Alicia Clark, with a clear out, runs and shows some help and gets in the gap and forces her to pass. The 14 is bouncing and one for Asia Wilson. But Wilson's MVP case isn't without its flaws. The Aces, despite having four Olympians, are only the fourth seed. They were expected to be at the top, but they've fallen short of that. So if breaking the scoring record and leading the league in blocks and rebounds is enough to bend the usual MVP rules, then sure, she might deserve it but it's something worth thinking about. People need to realize that being the best player in the world doesn't always guarantee you the MVP. Take LeBron James, he's one of the greatest to ever play, but he only won four MVPs. Now, when you compare Aja's season to Caitlyn's, that's a conversation folks aren't ready to have. Caitlyn's accomplishments, whether it's for Rookie of the Year or MVP, keep getting downplayed. She's just not getting the credit she deserves. And Caitlin Clark, last 12 games, 23.4 points or 47% shooting, second leading scorer in the entire WNBA behind the, the monster that is Asia Wilson, who's going to be league MVP and deserves it, by the way. 10.6 assists for Caitlin Clark. Leads the lead. She's the league assist leader, okay? Nine and three since July 6th, third best record in the WNBA over this time behind Minnesota and the New York Liberty. And I already added, Caitlin Clark has been flat out balling and she has elevated her level of play to a point. There is no debate. But let's talk about Caitlin Clark for a moment. While Aja's legacy is cemented, Caitlin's story is still unfolding. Just last night, 
her rookie WNBA season came to an end. The Indiana Fever lost to the Connecticut Sun, and though Caitlin led the scoring with 25 points, it wasn't her best shooting night. After the game, a reporter asked her about her favorite moment from the season. There were so many moments, um, and every place we went was so unique, honestly. It's fun to kind of look back. Like People always ask me, like, where was, where was your favorite road arena? And I'm like, they're all so different and unique in their own way. And obviously for me, my first year here is like, getting to travel to all these new arenas. And there was a few I'd already played at in college, but um, just doing it as my first time in the WNBA, a huge learning opportunity for myself. I learned a lot about myself as a basketball player, as a person, um, being resilient when you're, your back's up against the wall, um, but also really coming into our own and really thriving. And I think, you know, once we figured it out, it was, it was a lot of fun. Instead of talking about her amazing stats or her highlights, Clark talked about how much she values her teammates and friendships. She said that championships are great, but relationships are even more important. Clark's answer shows how she's able to focus on the positive, but it's also a great lesson about winning. It's about using emotional intelligence. Clark's comments show how building strong relationships can help you achieve more and be happier at the same time. And there's a lot of research to back that up. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and hit the subscribe button for more content like this.